Innovation and digital transformation are key pillars in the strategy of Generali. Europe's third largest insurer set aside no less than 1 billion euro for strategic initiatives to make this happen. And we're therefore very proud that Mrs. Isabel Connor, member of the Group Management Committee and Group Chief Marketing and Customer Officer at Generali, is one of our keynote speakers. Mrs. Connor is responsible for all aspects of Generali's customer and distribution experience, digital transformation and the Generali grant globally. It is really great to have someone so passionate about customer and distributor innovation here with us today. Thanks for joining us, Isabel. Thank you for coming. You could be sunning yourselves, but you're here instead. How nice. Now, what a cute introduction. Does Roger do this everywhere? It's his little shirt on, it's so cute. All right, now I know this is the, uh, the digital insurance agenda, but I want to talk about agents. I want to talk about the 21st century digital agents. And I want to start with um, a report that came out 10 years ago. It was one of the large consulting companies that predicted the demise of agents. And I want to say that here we are, 10 years later, and for us at Generali, we love agents. We have 172,000 of them. 50% are within Europe and the other 50% in Asia. They produce 63% of our GWP. We're talking about 41 billion euros that these agents bring in each year. And last year was our most profitable year at Generali, and we have a 190-year history. So we're really behind these guys. I wanted to also talk about why they are successful, because not all agents will succeed, but I think Darwin said it best, you know, it's survival of the species, but it's the ones that are the most responsive to change. So I think the fact that an agent today, an entrepreneur, can adapt to the new needs of the market, to the new needs of the customers, to all the digital tools, that's what we need to have happen. So we're on a transformation journey, and the transformation is based on a lot of the data that we are gathering each quarter. So we're in the market, 24 countries, 100,000 consumers every quarter. So this is post-COVID fresh data about what customers are looking for. The first thing is this trusted advisor. It may seem so trite and we've heard it a thousand times, but really to get to find that trusted advisor is very difficult. So we're trying to create an army of men and women out there who can project this trust in an advisory form. Secondly, personalization. That's what consumers are looking for. One size fits all is over. So people are looking for someone who understands them, probes, and then comes up with a solution that is customized to their needs. And thirdly, we've got to stay in touch. Insurance is notorious for the sale and post-sale, out of sight, out of mind. And we see the RNPS after one year, two years, three years, if the agent has not been in touch, we've got a retention issue. So this is, this is not only our customer transformation movement, but it becomes our agent transformation movement because this is going to be our differentiator in the market. This is how we're going to drive value, especially in an inflationary context where we're going to increase prices. We've got to deliver value. Now, COVID was a big accelerator for us. If I think back two and a half years ago, we had probably 10% of our agents who were, um, who were able to advise and sell remotely. Today, we have 100%, and we did that in about three months. So that, when you, when you, 
you, there's a will, there's a way, and uh, here the, the organization really got behind it. Secondly, uh, I'd say three years ago, probably 15% of our agents were online, promoting themselves uh, through all the social platforms. Today, we're close to 50%. So there's really been a big upskilling and a, and a big change on that front. So this is uh, the new profession now. We call it a fidgetal advisor. But for us, it's an important new role, and especially when you think that we are really making a bet on agents, 172,000 of them, we need them to really become these fidgetal advisors. So what's a fidgetal advisor? The vision is that we are moving from the pure branch to the branch plus. It's not very complicated, but to get there, this transformation requires a big shift. So the vision here is that we are moving from an agent that's very reactive, transactional, mostly focused on protection, and we're moving towards a much more agile, fidgetal, lifetime partner advisor. So we're, we're going in for a longer play here, the life cycle of the customer versus just the product. And these agents that we're trying to form are much more proactive, contact is very important, ad ongoing advice, deepening the relationship, share of wallet, and then, of course, focusing on a full suite of protection, prevention, and assistance. So we can talk about tools, we can talk about training, but really this transformation is about behavioral and attitudinal change. And that is harder when you consider that we have 172,000 men and women who've got to go through this transition. So let's look at one of our agents. This is uh, a handsome uh, Francesco from Brescia, beautiful city if you've never been there, giant Generali presence. So he's been, um, he's been with Generali for eight years. So even though he looks young, yeah, he's 35, when he started, he was trained more traditionally. And there's been a re real evolution with Francesco because uh, he's very much online, so he's leveraging all the platforms, he's got a following, so he's, he's generating all the leads, he's, he's promoting himself, his thought leadership, so leveraging the content platform, got the pipeline, the reach. But I think the, the, the biggest change in Francesco is that he is sharing 100% of the data with Generali, the customer data. And that is really where we want to get to with many more of our agents. At my dinner table last night, I was sitting next to somebody who said, that will never happen. I could tell you it's already happening because there is benefit in Francesco's mind. He realizes that if, if he's going to become this lifetime partner advisor, he's going to need help from Generali to manage the customer relationship and that he doesn't need to spend time doing a million mundane things. So we are helping him through smart automation, trying to remove some of those mundane tasks, automating things at the, at the sales, at the policy issuance, at the renewal, through the apps. 35% of our clients today are using the mobile app. The reason they use it is because the agents are saying, listen, there are certain things you can do on the app. You don't have to call me for everything. Call me if you need advice. Call me if you have a big change in your life. But some of the things you probably would prefer to self-serve. So that's the first thing. He sees the benefit of the, the automation. Also, the data analytics. The more data he gives us, the more we are able to give back to him through predictive models. So we help him avoid some churn. We help him up and cross-sell. And then also on the AI, there's also lots of opportunity here for the more he gives us the data, the more we can personalize the pricing and for those highest value customers, give back to them in some discount mechanisms. So there's a real win-win in the sharing of the data, and that's why we are seeing that movement really starting to take off. Day-to-day, -day, this is what's going on with Francesco. So pre-sales, yes, he is very active on social, so all these leads are coming in. We give him an, a digital advisory tool, so he can use this thing wherever he is. On the go, he's got all the data, he's connected at all times. 
As soon as the lead is coming in, he's able to capture the data, he's able to digitally uh, book an appointment in the calendar, and then the advisory sale can begin. So here, he's, he's collecting more data in the first meeting, perhaps there's a second meeting, and then he's going through a personalized solutions configuration, all again, part of the digital advisory tool. The offer is now modular, the agent can bundle it, the customer loves it because they feel they are getting the personalization that the products and the solutions are being configured to them. And then post-sales begins the nurturing. And this is really a big shift, the nurturing of our customers. So they need the time to do that, which again is why we need to remove some of the mundane tasks because we need them to do an annual checkup. We need them to continue to promote uh, content and advice. So this is uh, the, the, the new position, positioning of our agents. I think it's projecting a much more empathetic, caring, advisory brand in the local communities. And now let's look at what's made this success happen for him. And I would say it's three things. So one is the, the tool, for sure. The advisory tool, and anybody can be trained for a several week immersion into a tool. But then I think what's more interesting is the behavioral and attitudinal training that we do beyond the training on the tool. So how do you approach a customer? What is the opener in a much more needs-based advisory interview? Uh, what, are the, what are some of the probing techniques? What questions should I ask? Uh, how far can I go? How, so there's lots of training we do behaviorally. Secondly, the value proposition. I talked about the modular uh, and the bundling of our platforms. But the personalization is absolutely key. And here the data strategy is imperative because we need to be personalizing the product, the service, the price, and ideally, the go-to-market, the packaging, all customized to that customer. So that, in my mind, is one of the most exciting aspects of insurance when I think of the next three to five years is that middle piece on the value proposition. And then incentives and rewards, of course, we continue to incentivize a large part on the growth of the portfolio, the volumes, but we're also adding new lifetime partner dimensions. So contact is an important one. Uh, data sharing is another. Uh, making sure that you are doing the advisory methodology, absolutely. So there are lots of new dimensions that are being rewarded to, draw, to increase the retention in addition to new volumes coming in. So yeah, uh, again, I know this is the, uh, the digital insurance uh, agenda, but you know, technology, digital tools without the proper mindset will not work. So for us, the, this is a human business, a relationship business, face-to-face, -face, there is a big digital component, but we need to continue the human touch and the caring elements. And so far, and again, we're early in our journey, so this is, uh, we, we are seven months into the, the, the new uh, three-year plan. So this, this journey will take time, especially when you're talking about 172,000. We don't expect every agent will change. Some will have to go and that's fine and we'll have to bring some new, new skills, that's good too. But we're, we're going for at least 50% of the agents really becoming lifetime partner advisors. So, so far, we're seeing the premium increasing on new business Likewise, on, uh, on renewal, and then the, the percentage of policies with more needs covered is rising. And this is really important. Actually, in the balance scorecard of all of our top 200, we have the multi-holding as a KPI in addition to the RNPS. So the multi-holding is how we're going to quantify if we have succeeded as a lifetime partner. And then in addition to this, of course, uh, retention is increasing, RNPS is increasing for agents and for the, for the brand. 
and, uh, and the quality of the data is also going up. So we really feel we're on the right track. And we also believe that uh, this is a real opportunity for us to recruit, to recruit new professionals. So we believe that this agile lifetime partner advisor role becomes really an attractive value proposition for someone who's entering the workforce and thinking, what could I do? Instead of going to work for a consulting firm, why not? Yeah, consider a role as an advisor uh, in, uh, in financial services. So we think this is quite compelling. And uh, if you have a son or a daughter who would like, uh, or a nephew or a niece or yourself, you're thinking about a career change and you want to be an advisor and you, you like the mindset of an advisor, but you're not scared about the tools, please let us know because we have a new profession for you. And that's it. That was quick, uh, very short, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much.